الحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم صل على محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اشهد ان لا اله الا الله واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله my dear brothers and sisters assalam alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh today we're going to continue with our topic that we were discussing previously we were talking about the husband and the wife and the family and how the husband has been given authority by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a very limited way but he has been given some authority in order to discipline his family in order to correct them and to keep them away from evil and we were explaining that how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had given the man the authority to apply some very 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 limited type of physical force in order to stop his wife and uh, from committing things that are subhanahu wa ta'ala disobedience to Allah bad for herself bad for the society bad for the family so we were discussing that and we were looking into it and we were emphasizing how the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam did not allow this physical force to leave a mark any type of bruising uh, or to subhanallah to also in any way to uh, hit the face or anything like that so also this is something that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh, told us about uh, and in fact in the book itself the major sins here that we're going through it means that the word the word that is used uh, that is often translated as beat in english always sounds really terrible uh, but in reality what it means uh, is that that it is something that is light it is very light that does not cause hurt so it shouldn't hurt his wife and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds the man that if the wife returns to obedience in no way should he continue to be angry with her or anything like that so this is something that is subhanallah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has allowed and we should remember as well brothers and sisters the context of uh, these verses the society in which it was very important we didn't have the structures and the things in place that we do in our societies today uh, and that it was very important that people were able to govern themselves I don't think actually the importance of that has left us at all I think that the idea that police forces and TV cameras and monitors could somehow replace the fear and the consciousness and the awareness of God in your life is a mistaken one it will never be a substitute for it and sadly we can see the consequences of authority being taken away from the individuals from the men over their women from the women over their children from the parents over their children and we can see the consequences of that uh, in the disintegration of discipline and authority in society and this is because of a few people who have transgressed the limits and who have ended up abusing their wives causing violence to them and to their children which also causes violence to them the best way to respond to that is not by prohibiting anything or any type of uh, means for a man to correct his family or the parents to correct the children that's the wrong reaction the right way to deal with it is by punishing those people who transgress the limits appropriately that is the right way to deal with it and to make an example of them so that if they abuse their position of authority then people know that that also will not be tolerated because if you destroy this respect and this ability to respect the authority that is there then the whole society is bit by bit going to begin to disintegrate so brothers and sisters this is the wisdom behind what the religion teaches of course every individual who is listening to this should understand that in no way or shape or form does this promote any type of domestic violence absolutely not the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam never beat his wives the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said the best of you are not those who beat their wives in fact the prophet said the best of you are those who are best to their wives so that is the example of our messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam and that is that even that limited type of uh, you know physical admonition that we have been talking about anyway brothers and sisters I don't want to prolong this discussion too much but it is important to clarify it why because obviously this is one of the misunderstandings people have about Islam this is even one of the accusations they have about Islam 
And as I have put forward to you in the previous session, it's a type of hypocritical accusation, since they themselves, without any doubt, assign authority to some human beings to apply violence and restraint to other human beings. So they do that in their societies. In Islam, we happen to do that for the husband over his wife and for the wife over the children. So this is something that is there, uh, that alhamdulillah Islam has given us. It should not be abused and no one should abuse this position. Now in respect to this, we want to go back to the importance of harmonious relationships in the society. And so, in a sense, the basis of that is the position of the husband as the person who has authority in the family. We've talked about that. And we also mentioned that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that Allah has given men superiority over women, it means in this particular area. Does that mean that men are in general superior to women in every single way, shape or form? Absolutely not. In fact, in some ways, women are superior to men. And we've already mentioned that. We mentioned that when we talked about obeying your parents. We mentioned how the Prophet ﷺ was asked, who has the most right to my kindness? And the Prophet ﷺ said, your mother. And then he said, and after that, the man asked, and he said, and then your mother. And then again, he said, and after that, again, the Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi your mother. And then he said, and after that, he said, and then your father. This proves that, in fact, the mother is three times superior to the father. So by that, the woman, in this case, has three levels of superiority over the man. The point here, it means, it depends what you're talking about. In our religion, Everything has its place, its natural place, its natural way upon which Allah has created it. One of the greatest mistakes and confusions and causes of destruction that has been introduced into the world by the Western man-made ideas is that men and women are the same. They say men and women are equal. Well, that's good. Men and women should be equal under law and they should have equal rights and they should be paid the same amount of money for doing the same job, which by the way, by and large, until now, even in the West, they are not paid the same amount of money to do the same job. Women are paid less, usually even sometimes a third less, until now. No. Equality under law, fine. But are men and women the same? No, this is an idea that now is trying to be pushed, that men and women are the same that there's no difference between men and women. And that is ridiculous, that is absurd, that is destructive, that is unnatural, and that will only ultimately lead to confusion and, I believe, destruction of society. Our religion teaches us that Allah has created men with a nature and women with a nature. What is the right way to behave is that men should act according to their nature and society should encourage that and women should act according to their nature and society should encourage that. That is the basis of our viewpoint in this regard. So from this point of view, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, within all of that context, and I'm painting that context to help us understand the sayings of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the verses of the Qur'an that talk to us about the pious believing woman, she is devoutly obedient. She is obedient to her husband. When her husband commands her to do something, she obeys him. She listens to him. So this is on many different levels. And this is a means for her to earn the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and for her to go to paradise. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said that a woman who performs her obligatory prayers and she gives the zakah, the charity, and she fasts the month of Ramadan, and she obeys her husband, Allah will say to her, enter paradise by whichever gate you please. In fact, we don't find any type of invitation like that for the men. This is something exclusive for the women. That if they do this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will allow them to enter paradise by whichever gate they please. 
Also, the Prophet وسلم, said that the angels and the birds and the creatures, they supplicate and they pray for the woman who is obedient to her husband. However, if she is disobedient to her husband and she upsets him and annoys him, then those same creatures, those same creation, they curse her and they call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to remove his mercy from that woman. So it's very important within the structure of society and for the structure of the family that the woman obeys her husband. And it is a major sin in Islam. It is one of the major sins that a wife should disobey her husband. And what is this obedience in? It's very important for us to understand what this obedience is in regards to what? Well, basically, it's in regards to anything that she is capable of doing as long as it is not disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if the husband orders her with something and she is capable of doing it, then she should do it according to the best of her ability. That is because of the huge right the husband has upon the wife due to his working and earning money and spending that money on her and maintaining her and protecting her and also because Allah has given him that responsibility to maintain and protect the family. It's also to do with the fact that he has been given that responsibility by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just the sheer fact of that means that that position is due to that level of respect. It's very interesting in this regard that recently I was reading about a case where in England a man was defending his children because they refused to stand up for the head teacher when the head teacher came into the room. So this new head teacher in this school, that was the school his kids were at, and this new head teacher came and the head teacher said that he wanted the children to stand up when he came into the room. And he wanted to do that in order to teach them and so that they would develop respect for the head teacher. Now the father said, my children shouldn't have to respect him until he earns that respect. So he was saying, if you want respect, you have to earn it. But then the head teacher was saying, the respect is not for me. It's not for me personally. The respect is due to my position. It's that position that is due respect, not the individual. So the respect should be given to the position irrespective of whether that particular individual is, you know, worthy of respect or not. This was the argument. Well, that same type of argument is in respect to the husband, in respect to the wife, because this is an issue. My husband is not this. My, maybe my husband doesn't provide for me properly, or my husband doesn't this, or my husband behaves like this. No, respect is due to the position of husband. That is because Allah has given that position a certain level of authority, and it is a duty of the wife to respect that position that he has in order to make it easy for him, in order to fulfill his responsibility. She should encourage him and make it easy for him and help him in piety and righteousness. And this is what the Quran says, that in respect to the husband and the wife, it is a union of love. This is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he describes it. Indeed, he says in the Quran, the meaning of which is that it is amongst his signs that he put love between your hearts, between the husband. It's amongst the proofs and the evidences of Allah's power and Allah's might, the existence of this love and compassion between the husband and the wife. And he also says, you are libas, you are a garment for them and they are a garment for you. This is how the husband and the wife are protecting each other and helping to keep each other away from evil. So she should help him as much as she can in order to fulfill that position that he has of being in authority over herself and the family. That is why the Prophet wasallam, when some of the Muslims came back from the Hijrah in Abyssinia and they began to tell the Prophet wasallam, how the Christians there, some of them used to prostrate in front of their priests and their bishops. 
And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, oh, what they did is they came back and they prostrated in front of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Prophet said, do not do that. Don't do that. In fact, the only one who you should prostrate in front of, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, is Allah. No human being is worthy because that's prostrating as an act of worship. And that act of worship must only be done to Allah and no created being is worthy that they should be prostrated in front of not even the prophet of Allah and so they said well messenger of Allah this is what we found these Christians doing to their bishops and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said no only Allah is deserving of this but if I was to order one human being to prostrate in front of the other it would have been the wife before the husband if he was to order it it would have been the wife before the husband this is to show and to emphasize that position that Allah has given to the husband. How important that position is and how important it is for the wife to obey and to listen to her husband. Also the Prophet ﷺ said in regards to the rights, the rights of the husband that the wife needs to give to the husband. He said, for example, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that if she knew how great his right over her was, she would lick the pus out of his wounds. You can imagine in the time when they used to fight with swords and this and that, when they get cut, often they would get infected and the wounds would get pus. Even if she licked the pus from the wounds, if she understood the right of the husband, she would do that. Even the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said how much she should obey him. If he says to her, climb this mountain, climb the green mountain and come down, and climb the red mountain and come down, and climb the yellow mountain and come down. If she was able to do that, she should do it. It means to show how it is important that she obeys him. Now, it is important that the husband, of course, is only allowed to order his wife in something she has the ability to do. He can't order her to make herself sick or to make herself ill or to do something she is physically or mentally incapable of. No, he is not allowed to order her to do that. And if he orders her, then it's not disobedience if she refuses to do it. Also on top of that, there is a whole discussion about really what does the husband have the right to order his wife with. So there is some disagreement about this whole issue. Does he have the right to order her to do the housework? Does he have the right to order her to do various things? Some scholars even said, no, actually that's not her responsibility. That he should provide a maid or a servant or someone to help her look after the house. And they said her responsibility is primarily, she needs to look beautiful for him. And she needs to perfume herself and dress well and look beautiful for him. And when he asks her or commands her to have intimate relationships, this is one thing she absolutely must obey him in, except of course if she is in her monthly periods or she is in postnatal bleeding, then of course that is haram, that is forbidden to come to your wife at that time. So this is very clear from what the Prophet ﷺ said, if a man calls his wife to bed and she refuses, and he spends the night angry, the angels curse her until the morning. Bukhari and Muslim collected it. In another version he said, by him in whose hand is my soul, if a woman who has been called to her husband's bed refuses, the one who is in heaven, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is displeased with her until her husband is pleased with her. He continues to be displeased with her until her husband is pleased with her, Bukhari and Muslim collected it. So it is very, very clear and it is very specific about mentioning this issue. Indeed, to the extent where the Prophet ﷺ said, even if she is in the kitchen and she's cooking and her husband calls her, she should come to him, you know, for the sexual act. Even in another narration, if she's riding on the camel, you know, in the days they used to have the howd, the sort of, what you call it, the box, she should, and he calls her, she should obey him. Brothers and sisters, this is very important. And it also, subhanAllah, is such an insight from our Creator to the nature of man, the nature of the male. When I say man here, I mean male as opposed to human being. This is the man. 
the man is very, very much, this is something very important for him. If the man is not able to satisfy his sexual needs with his wife, he will be very much tempted or even motivated to go and do that sexual act with other than his wife. And that is something, as we will talk about, fornication and especially adultery is one of the most great causes for destruction and corruption in the earth, for the individual and for the society. One of the reasons of marriage is to have a lawful and a halal way for this to happen. And I'm going to be talking a little bit more about this topic under the issue of adultery and fornication, which is a very important topic that we're going to be covering next, inshallah. In the next session, we'll be talking about that. Why and why is it so bad and why is it so evil and why we need to protect ourselves from it and why it is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prohibited. So my dear brothers and sisters, please take care, O husbands, of your wives. Remember your duty to them and your responsibility to them to care for them, to love them, to treat them kindly, to provide for them. And O wives, remember that it is something severe in the sight of Allah that angers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that you should refuse your husband when he calls you, and that you should care for him and obey him and disobeying him and refusing him and leaving his house without permission and letting people visit the house without his permission is all a cause for the anger and the curse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to come upon you. And they are amongst without doubt the major, major sins in Islam. They're amongst the major sins that are a cause for the displeasure of Allah to fall upon you, for your heart to become hardened, for you to be distant from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So my dear sisters in Islam, please take care of this. Fear Allah. It is never too late to repent. Ask Allah for forgiveness. Make your best to please your husband, to obey your husband, to fulfill his wishes and his desires in the best way, as long as they are halal. May Allah guide you and me and all of us closer to the right path. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.